Hey guys, Harley from Cricket Fanatics Magazine here with another special episode of the On Lockdown Show. Today, we have a very special guest once again, Andre Nal. So I just want to get into your um, into your history, but obviously your story and learn about your story, etc. But I like to start the show with talking about lockdown itself. Um, let's just talk okay. about for you when the when the lockdown hit. Um, what what went through your mind, and how did you, as a as a person in your industry, have changed the way you operate, etc.? So lockdown actually started a little bit earlier for us. Um, you know, there there was a, somebody in our team that had potentially been exposed to someone that, you know, was infected. So as a precautionary me- measure only, we um, were actually asked to stay at home a little bit earlier. So um, I think I'm on day 80 or something now. Um, but I think I remember in that moment turning around, going home and just going, OK, maybe I should go fetch the kids because, um, you know, it didn't make sense to me that they were at school when, you know, I was at home. So I went to go fetch them. And I remember a little bit, it was surreal, right? So um, you were kind of like trying to figure out, trying to work from home. Kids thought it was great fun um, because they were now staying at home the whole time. And then suddenly, you know, going, OK, we need to mobilize and get into momentum now because there's still work to be done and there's still a household to run and there's still kids to take care of. So um, I think for me, it it didn't seem real originally and then initially. And then, you know, I think the, the, the reality of the situation dawned on me and it was just really great to then have my loved ones close by and to keep them safe. I think that was my immediate focus. Yeah, of course. And and from a from a work perspective, because um, I know with me uh, starting this, obviously, I started this journey about 11 months ago. So we're eating our first birthday on the 1st of July. And um, I'm so used to being out and about doing interviews with people, meeting up with guys and watching games, etc. And then it switched with this old, I can find a digital strategy that's going to help me be able to do interviews. And this is basically mm. you on one of the methods right now. I started on our <laughs> series. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, from there, um, it's, it's taken off. So. Yeah, I, th- I think for me, from a work perspective, I've got the privilege of working on the ad ho program for KFC, which obviously, um, you know, feeds 150,000 kids every day. So the moment that we realized what the impact of lockdown and closing of schools was going to be, um, you know, with regards to the program and that kids won't be at school to get that meal anymore. For us, it was really about mobilizing, making sure we, that we still get food to the households and not, not just feeding those kids, but also their families. So it's been an incredibly humbling journey to try and make sure that we get the resources to go as far as possible and putting in place a supply chain that helps us to cap, um, maximize the the capital resources that we did have, um, but also keep people safe while we're delivering all the food parcels. So certainly from a work perspective, um, it has impacted. We we work for a great company that has been phenomenal in terms of making sure we stay safe um, and that we, uh, you know, are able to work from home. So in that regard, um, you know, it's it's definitely been uh, it's it's been great to kind of uh, get to know people via a screen, but I do miss the per- personal interaction. I'm not going to lie. Okay, awesome. So a lot of people might not know uh, about your journey, and uh, this is my one of my favorite parts about the show is, is getting <laughs> to know you better and your journey because yeah. I know you have very very qu- uh, closely related to to cricket, and obviously being a cricket fanatics channel as well. Um, you must have started as a cricket fan first. So can you tell me about that journey into you be, being a cricket fan and what drew you to cricket per se, and then obviously going into a role as a, a media manager, et cetera, and, and tell me about that history a bit. So I remember cricket as being the one sport that my dad watched at home, right? He was a great Hansi fan and, you know, all the greats that played alongside him. And I remember, you know, watching the game with him. It's also the first professional sport that I would actually go to watch. So at that stage, it was still the Western Transvaal um, and the Dragons playing in Northwest. So we, I grew up in, in Paris in the free states that was close by to go and actually watch the games. Um, and then, you know, kind of very... Accidentally, I met Jacques Fall, who's now this uh, Cricket South Africa CEO. Um, I met him at the age of 21, and I started as a marketing intern at Northwest Cricket in Poch. Um, 
And then uh, he eventually I uh, got a permanent position there looking after media and events for Northwest Cricket and started working with the Lions cricket team. Mm -hmm. And a short while thereafter, um, the team was heading into the Champions League, the 2010 Champions League that was being hosted in South Africa. And I got my first opportunity to be a media manager for, for the team. Um, you know, it was just really incredible to kind of start on that stage because you would go into, um, you know, stadiums with the Mumbai Indians and the guys. It was just a phenomenal experience. Yeah. Um, and I remember as a, as a young team, uh, you know, the Lions team was just, uh, we were in awe because it was really one of the first editions of that competition. And it's, I'm still super sad that it's, that it's fallen away because I think mm. um, it was such a great stage for domestic players to get exposed to the, the bigger game um, and also for domestic teams to get international exposure. Um, but then after I started at the Lions and the Bitbiz Wanderers uh, at that point in time, it's now the Imperial Wanderers. And it was just like having the building as my office was pre pretty much a dream come true at that stage for me. Um, and I was in the great privilege of working with the amateur version of the game through the the heart and cricket. Um, and then obviously the, the, the Wanderers being the boring and, you know, being the home of cricket in South Africa, in my opinion, in any yeah. case, I'm completely biased. Um, and then obviously working with a professional team and professional players. Um, it was just, it was just such an incredible experience. Um, they, and, I, and I worked there for, for eight years. So my, my cricket journey was all in all 10 years. I um, traveled with the team to India um, when we partook in the Champions League there in 2013. I had another version of the, the competition in South Africa in 2012. Um, and then we went, uh, you know, I had the privilege of working with the uh, Delhi Daredevils and, and visiting them in India during uh, the 2018 IPL. So I think just such incredible highlights. And what I think the, the one thing I took out of um, my journey in cricket is just the, the amazing passion that South Africans have for the game in South Africa and how they, uh, it just unites everybody. I loved walking around the stadium and seeing a, a crowd that's so representative of South Africa. Um, and it's just, uh, people love it. Hey? People love to, to gather there as families and as, you know, friends. And uh, I think there was still a research stat that said that, you know, it's the one game that people love to spend time with their friends and family, which, you know, it says so much about the game. Um, and I think, you know, definitely a career highlight was uh, starting the Pink Day. Uh, it was, okay. I was at the the Wanderers for, for one season um, and going into my second season, I said, listen, we, I think there's something we need to do. And Australia was touring South Africa and obviously they've got the Pink Test in Australia. And we started off with the Pink Day as a test match. And then the next year, the guys from Momentum said, why don't we make this as the ODI? And so the pink ODI was born. And last year, I got to go watch the game for, for the very first time as a fan. It was just such a great day out. Yeah. Always an amazing experience. And thank you for, for being involved with that, because it's one of the biggest highlights of the year for all cricket fans. And I know all cricket fans will love those days and remember some great memories from those days as well. Obviously, you know, but A.B. de Villiers and his record. <laughs> yeah. So, like, um, for, for you, I just want to go a little bit more into that about your role as as, as that figure in, in cricket. Because um, it must be quite difficult to, to, to um, basically work with so many different types of personalities, cricketers, mm -hmm. etc., um, what were some of the the main highlights for you and maybe some of the, the difficult um, things that you could have learned or lessons you've learned that you can give adv um, advice to other young people that are aspiring to be just like you? Yeah, so I think, well, first and foremost, it's super humbling. I just feel like I was a student in, on the journey and of the game of cricket. Um, for, and I'm still incredibly grateful for the opportunity I got to be a part of it. Um, you know, being a part of the, the cricket environment is so humbling so you know you go from these highs to these lows you've got trophies that you're winning um you know and then you know, obviously the the games that don't go well and there were a couple of seasons where we lost a lot of games like we got the wooden spoon in all three formats the one season and it was like one of the most painful things it felt like i was on the field um but I think if I if I take a look at personality, so I think the the one thing when I, when I actually did my MBA thesis, I did it on, um, you know, why it's so hard to sometimes implement strategic change into sport. 
in South Africa. And the number one reason that came out was emotion. And I think for me, that is probably what makes it sometimes hard to work in sport in South Africa is the fact that there's so much emotion involved. And people are driven by their passion for the game in terms of, you know, whether they're involved at club cricket level, whether they're involved at um, board level, whether they are, you know, um, just volunteers in the game. So, I mean, there are lots of volunteer coaches that, that get involved in the game. Um, and, and I think that gave me such great insight into why people maybe sometimes show up and behave the way they do. Um, I think so. If I had to, some of the highlights was for me was whenever a Lions player made it into the, the protest team. And I think the first one I remember, so I was actually at Patch with Chris Morris. Um, and back then, like he, he only like played occasionally for the Dragons team. Um, and I was an intern, right? So like both of us, we were really at the very bottom of the food chain at that point in time. And then we kind of both progressed to the Lions team. And he was playing a game in Kimberley, if I'm not mistaken, when the IPL auction was offered. It was shortly after our Champions League in South Africa, where we beat the Chennai Super Kings and we played in the final. Um, and I like the whole journey, like Chris literally went out to bat and he came back and, it, you know, he had gotten one of the biggest contracts of the IPL. And like, I remember how proud I felt as though it was my own accomplishment. But every time a player made it into the protest side, um, it was just so superbly special for me. So, you know, it's as if you were a little part of that journey. Um, so like some of the highlights, Dwayne Pretorius, um, Rassi van Edison, Timber Bavuma, just like some of that. And and I think the other highlights was just like being able to be a part of something super special. So as I mentioned the pink day before, but we also hosted a sleep out at the Boring the one evening where we invited 150 kids um, from our development program to come and we built a big tent on the outfield in, uh, in the Boring. And we got some of our partners, Hershey's and the guys to help us. And we, we actually got beds for these kids. And the, that evening we told them they watched a movie. It was like, you know, their best night ever. And I remember us telling them that they could take those beds home. And some of those kids had never had a bed in their life, right? Mm -hmm. um, and just like being a part of that, and that was superbly special for me. But I thought if I take a look at, there were also some some definite lows for me. So obviously the, the whole... Um, uh, attempted match fixing in the T20 um, with Gillen Bodie and the guys, um, that that was superbly hard for me. Um, and also having to to speak to partners and, and letting them know what was happening within the team. And I think for me, it also just uh, said so much about the level of partners we had that they stayed involved um, with the team at that point in time and how the team then rebuilt after that, right, was mm -hmm. was again a highlight for me. So so I think in the game there's a there's a lot of like highs and lows. Um but it was just uh, I think if you if you long for the ride, it's so worth it at the end of the day. Yeah, of course. And now you've moved on from this and you were kind of a part of your even bigger project and I think an even more important project. I've been to so many um, KFC mini cricket festivals, etc., <laughs> and seeing what you guys, uh, all of these things that KFC mini cricket does for, yeah. for cricket in South Africa, and it's such an important project. There's so many people that have come through, and so many protests that have come through that system. Um, it's Lutus Apamlas, for one, that has spoken about that that journey. There's a guy, there's many guys that I've spoken to on the lockdown series that spoke about that journey. But can you can you maybe give me an introduction into your role as a CSI manager, etc., and what it currently is, and what your role is with helping KFC mini cricket really promote the game of cricket in South Africa and basically also and obviously it that also inevitably um, shares it with the world. Sure. So I think that um, initially I didn't join um, KFC and was going to be a part of the, the mini cricket program. And when I when uh, they told me I was absolutely delighted, it felt like my world had gone a full 360, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, it, and, you know, obviously understanding the, the, the operation of the game um, has really helped me to kind of see, you know, how we can amplify and support the game even further. Mm -hmm. But the mini cricket program is just so superbly special. Um, not only is it one of the biggest grassroots development programs that, you know, it's for a lot of kids, it's the only form of structured sport that they've got access to um, because it needs so little, right? So we, we we provide the equipment. They just need a place of grass and a couple of friends to play with. So the, the barriers to entry to the game are really low. But I also think that 
something um, that, that's really a crucial part of this is we've got over 13,000 volunteer coaches that get involved with this program at no remuneration sure. and just absolutely love the game. And they've got a passion for the, the benefit that this brings to the communities that they've got. And I think for me that that is a, a you know, just so inspirational to see how these coaches keep the fire burning for mini cricket in their corners in their country. Um, you know, as a brand, we are phenomenally passionate about the com communities that we operate in. And, you know, in most communities in the country, you'll find a KFC, right? Um, and and we, we believe that we are, it's only right that we invest back into those communities and also into the future of South Africa through the mini cricket program. So this program, um, not only does it, you know, teach kids the uh, sports skills that they need um, to progress and, you know, to, um, you know, become cricketers at the end of the day, but it also helps them to be active. So we know that it being active is a really big part of an act of a healthy lifestyle and more and more so for kids and their, their physical development is super important. But but even more so, like one of the real highlights and passion points for me of the program is the fact that this program um, also teaches kids so much value in terms of life skills, so teamwork and discipline and coming together as a team and playing with others and allowing everybody the opportunity to um be a part of the game is just these are absolute absolute highlights for me um the the other thing that i um really love about the the program is that it um it, it's such a level playing field so regardless of where you come from um you know what community you're from the moment that you step over that uh the, onto that field, um, whether it's boundary rope or whether it's just a piece of grass that you found, um, these kids, it doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter um, what your background is. They, they all play together, the boys and the girls. Um, they just have absolute fun. They get so active um, and just... You know, if you take a look at some of those festivals, you'll see that there are over a thousand kids. It looks like absolute chaos, but I can guarantee you each one of those kids knows exactly where... Um, well, where they need to play and what is going on. Um, and I just find that it's so inspirational whenever I see that. Yeah, I mean, my experience with, with the KFC Mini Cricket Festival was incredible. My first one was at the one at Newlands that was recently. Um, mm -hmm. I've been to, to small mini cricket events around the country before, but but that particular festival was incredible for me to see how many so many smiles on kids' faces and parents as well, seeing their kids in action. And what 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 stood out to me as well is not only that it, that it develops those younger cricketers in the country and gives an opportunity to see the game, it's also what it's doing for the female game. And when I saw so many young, um, some of the young Proteas, women players interact with the kids and 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 female cricketers, young young girls getting introduced to the sport and having so much fun. And the smiles on their face when they just miss another a boy from a boy when it's incredible to see. Um you obviously you're doing this and and I think that your role in this industry is inspiration not only to, to people that are of uh, Sorry, we're just using some connection over here. Uh, this one thirty no people have to say. Um, okay, so uh, to the 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 role that you play, obviously, in so many people's um, in, in so many kids' hearts, and as well as a role model to so many women in the industry, because we know that this industry can be quite um, male dominated, but it's changing so fast, and yeah. and I love the way that the, that it is moving. Um, can you give me some insight into that? Um, and your role and how you see your role as a as a role model to so many young women in the industry as well as young kids and in the industry. So I think for me, the, the biggest thing is that I, I never saw myself as that, right? I just saw it as somebody that wanted to make it in the industry. Mm -hmm. And um, when I reflected and I looked back at it, I realized that more often than not, I was the only female at a board, <laughs> at a board <laughs> table. <laughs> Uh, 
Sorry, sorry. Um, I think it's lockdown and the kids at home, right? So uh, it's just part of the game. Um, but I think you know, and I, I just, I just had this absolute hunger to be successful in the industry, and I think I worked exceptionally hard. And then I realized I had to work even harder than most uh, of the guys in the game. Um, but I think f for me, the biggest thing is that anything is possible. Um, that's the one thing that cricket taught me as well with hard work and determination. And, you know, if you keep true to yourself and what your goals are, anything is possible. Um, I think it's high time that we've got more, more women involved in sport. And I think I love, I love seeing that, um, the heart of cricket board has now got a female chair of their board, um, for the first time, uh, you know, and Villas stepping to the fore, I think is going to really like open, open it up for so many women in the industry. The reality is that as, as a society, we're stronger when we're all represented around the table. And mm -hmm. that's why I would love for, for more young women to come through, um, you know, and also be, be a part, part of the game. But I also, I, I love seeing how the women's game, game has grown. And I think there, there needs to be credit to the sponsors and, um, for example, momentum that have invested into that game. And yes, I do think that a program like the mini cricket program plays a phenomenal part in that. Um, and that we are able to, um, you know, create an opportunity for the kids to really start at a very young age to fall, fall in love with the game. Um, which, which I think is important because we know everybody that participates in the mini cricket program aren't necessarily going to go on to play for representative and national teams and become pro tiers. Um, but, but they start out as fans and they fall in love with the game. And I think that's the magic. We, we believe that in years to come, the mini cricket kids and their families are going to be filling the stadiums. Um, so they, their journey and really they, they, um, you know, friendship with the game really starts at a young age. And we've got kids now as young as four and five years old starting to play mini cricket. Mm -hmm. So it's just it's just, just such an easy way for people to get involved um, with the game and be a part of it. Yeah, so because I have loads of debates, we have a podcast on a Sunday evening where we debate about the development of cricket in South Africa and where we're going to find the next stars. Um, KFC mini program, KFC mini cricket program is perfect for that. Can you talk to me a lot about what has what goes into um, planning those events and your role is kind of between obviously starting those KFC mini cricket programs to get those young kids in as well as going forward into the next generation. How much, how much input do you have with regards to that next phase of getting those young cricketers into the under 13 teams, et cetera, and letting them be scouted by major like small provinces or schools, et cetera. Yeah, so I think Cricket South Africa and the various coordinators that they've got around the country, they are the experts at, at administering the game. So as a partner to the game, we really see ourselves as, um, you know, the, the conduit for, you know, amplifying their efforts. So we, we um, you know, support them when they're organizing the game. We, um, you know, make sure that we become a part of... Uh, you know, for when they do the national seminar, we, we're an integral part of that and we see how we can amplify that. But, but we also, you know, we take great uh, responsibility in telling the story, um, you know, that uh, of Mini Cricket, the impact that it has in the lives of so many kids and also how, um, you know, it's got the ability to really make the difference um, in the lives of kids. We, we've heard so many stories of how organized sport has sometimes lifted kids out of their circumstances and, you know, some of the adversities that they were facing, um, you know, from, from a life perspective. Uh, from a life perspective so you know we, we really feel that sports in south africa has got the ability to unite and uplift this country and we we want to continue being a part of telling that story and being on that journey with south africans yeah is there one particular story maybe that stood out to you i know it's very difficult for you to pick one because yes. there must be so many <laughs> but is there any, any particular story that you maybe want to share with us that that could really inspire us and 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 let us know really as fans what you guys really see every single day. So um, one of the stories from last year that we found was a phenomenal for me. is a guy called Murray Dix. He's from Bergville in KZN. And the, he lost his foot as a, as a, as a very small child. Um, but, you know, he didn't let that... Um, you know, keep him back. He's involved in the mini cricket program with his prostheses. Um, you know, he plays with his kids. He's an absolute joy. And he actually got to meet some of his heroes at one of the T20 games um, in the last season. And for me, like Murray is just one of the examples of the kids in the program. Um, you know, how the kids just, uh, 
you know, it's almost like they 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 get the opportunity to be them best their best selves when they're amongst their friends and their equals, and they can just play the game. They all get to play in all positions, which is another really great th- thing about the mini cricket program. They play in all positions. Everybody gets a turn and a fair turn, um, you know. And they they uh, you you will see that it's not like you would see it as an amateur version of the game. They are super super competitive. Um, <laughs> And they, uh, you know, make sure that it, I know it's supposed to be non-competitive, but you wouldn't wouldn't say that if you saw the kids playing. They they're so passionate about playing their absolute best, um, you know, and that's why I think I learn so much from them every time that I see them play. But I think also for me, um, you know, there's so many parents that support their kids um, and that you know, uh, allow the kids to go play mini cricket. And I think the, the parents have also seen the value of it. And, you know, we, we hope that we can continue to build this program with Cricket South Africa. It's been phenomenal to be partners with them in the growth of this program. And we can't wait to see how we're going to take it forward. Okay, awesome. So lastly, I just would like you to promote anything that you are currently doing, anything that you, you haven't gotten <laughs> to say yet that you'd like to say. It's your chance now to yeah. say all of those things. Um, yeah, so I think that the the first thing for me is that, um, you know, whenever you get the opportunity to get involved in the mini cricket program, it, uh, it's, it's such a valuable and magical program that any kid that's involved in it really, um, you know, loves it. There are very few kids that I see that don't have a really, really big smile on their face when they're playing it. Um, and I think, uh, you know, it was really great to also during the lockdown period to have the opportunity to take the, the game into the homes of South Africans. So we challenged South Africans to play an even smaller version of the game at home with everyday household items. Called, and the game was called mini cricket. Um, mm-hmm. And we got some of our protests to get involved. Baron Hendricks and his son Timber played by himself because he was at home alone. And Rassi and his wife played. And it was just so cool to see how fans could engage and see, you know, get a little bit of a look inside the world of the players um, as they're having fun playing the game they love. And it all be it uh, un, um, you know, a unconventional way. So that that was absolutely great fun. And what we're going to be doing as a, as a brand, we want to continue partnering with Cricket South Africa to to create ex- memorable experiences for South Africa. Um, we we believe in the power of sport. We believe in the power of um, sport bringing people together, and we believe in this country. And we we're committed to continuing investing in it. Is there any way that you can maybe give something out there to people that want to join and get involved with the program, etc.? Maybe businesses, etc. Sure. So if you go into the kfc.co.za page, you'll see um, that there's a link to Mini Cricket and all the details that you need are on there. Or otherwise, you can always also go to Cricket South Africa's website. Cool. Thanks a lot. And that was an amazing experience to listen to your journey, etc. And I hope you come back on the platform to talk a little bit more about cricket down the line. Uh, <laughs> that would be awesome at the uh, more stories. Um, lastly, just a message to the Cricket Fanatics fans and that's it. Yeah, I think just continue loving this game. It's a game that um, has been a part of a very of many people's journey in South Africa. And whether you've played cricket or whether you're like me, you're just a fan. Um, keep on supporting the game. Um, once uh, you know COVID has um, moved into the distant past, you're going to see this game come back stronger than ever. Thanks a lot for for tuning in, guys. And uh, obviously, this is going to be on our YouTube channel and it is on Facebook as well. We will put a link on our lockdown binge list, which we have now. This is episode 48. So you guys have plenty of episodes to go and watch. Um, please don't remember to subscribe and like and tweet and retweet and obviously share this with everybody so that they can learn more about this program and the work that Andrew does. Thank, thanks a lot for joining in. Um, and I want to this to say to your family and to everybody in your immediate circle and spread around all the health in the world and all the strength in the world for this kind of difficult period. Thanks a lot for coming. It's very on the kind show. of you and the same to you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you for the opportunity. I'll speak to you soon. Bye. Cool. Thank you. Bye.